Happy belated July 4th, everybody. It's your boy, Michael Ray Haybauer, with the moving camera in the hallway. We're here to do a movie review. But first, I like to say this. Please hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Consider becoming an exclusive member of this channel for a couple of bucks for early exclusive content and some other specialties that will be coming soon. And I do have merchandise down below. Please check out the store. You might find something you want interesting. And there are donation portals below. And hopefully by the end of this video, I've earned your subscription, your like, your comment, or anything else. Happy July 4th, everybody. What movie are we going to review today? Well, I had the pleasure of having a beautiful, blessed day of life. Making some chicken wings. That video is for members only at the moment. But uh, we... I watched two movies. I watched two movies, and I'm going to do both of the reviews. The first movie I'm going to review is Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. I was able and excited to watch this movie, and I am so, so gung-ho about the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. Now, let's get it started with why did they call the movie Axel F? I mean, why did they just call it Beverly Hills Cop 4? And if you look at the logo and the poster, they write Beverly, Hill, Beverly Hills Cop, then they write actual F underneath. And if you, if, you, if you know how to manipulate logos, you can create a four with the L from actual and the part of the F, and you can create the symbol of a four. So it would say Beverly Hills Cop 4, and it would also say actual F if you change the color of the L and the little part to make it a four. Uh, it's just logo design, but it, that's just my thought process. But why'd they call it Actual F? Well, then I started thinking about other franchises, and we had Top Gun 2. I'm sorry, Top Gun Maverick. They named it after the main character, and it did very well. Now we got Beverly Hills Cop, Actual F, named after the main character, and it's probably doing well. Is this a marketing standpoint? Did they copy Top Gun? Are they going to make future movies like Top Gun Goose? Or Beverly Hills Cop Tiger? I don't know. This might have been Axel Foley's storyline. That's why it was called Axel F. And in the future, they could probably add characters to the franchise and call it Beverly Hills Cop Rosenwood. Or Tagger, yeah, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying. So I think it was a marketing ploy to do things like that for the future, but they still could have worked in the number four, and I would have appreciated that. But it worked. Let's talk about Beverly Hills Cop. All right, this is 40 years after the first Beverly Hills Cop, 30 years after Beverly Hills Cop 3, and Eddie Murphy came back with a bang. He didn't phone it in like he did, I believe, in Beverly Hills Cop 3. And this had all the tropes of Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2. We'll leave 3 in there, but it had the feels. And was it too much at times? Yes, it was. In the beginning of the movie, they threw in a lot of member berries, especially with the soundtrack. But Beverly Hills Cop has a formula. Like a heist in the beginning, we don't know what's going on, something's happening, you know, then a, a bad situation or a possible execution or something happens, and then, you know, it involves Axel Foley. Well, that's exactly, they followed that exact trope for this movie. But it involved, spoiler alert, uh, Axel Foley has a daughter. Well, that kind of confused me because there was a Beverly Hills Cop TV show I think in 95 that came out, and I saw an episode, I think they made the pilot, and he had a son, and they were doing cases with his son. So I guess that pilot from Beverly Hills Cop from 1995 is no longer in legacy or lore, so he has a daughter. Okay. No problem. Trust me. But still, you guys check out that pilot. I believe it's on YouTube. <laughs> I remember watching it. <laughs> but that being said, 
it started with the formulate, the Beverly Hills Cop formulate, and it gave us all the feels. And it gave us three big car chases in the beginning of the movie. Within the first 20 minutes, we had the entire soundtrack from the Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2, and we had the big car chases. And was it over the top? Yes, a good friend of mine, OGP, said he turned off the movie after about 15 minutes because it seemed over the top. But that was the point. I beg you to watch the rest of the movie. It is a good romp. But it was over the top. Some of the action sequences wouldn't happen, but it's in the middle of Detroit. And you got to love it. We're finally seeing something happen in Detroit, in, in, in Axel Foley's hometown. And the music was blaring, dun, 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 dun. and you love it. You love every minute of it. But I'll be honest with you, throughout this movie, they played every song. Neutron Dench, the heat is on, on the street. Like, they kept giving you member berries. They're like, hey, did you forget about this? Well, here's another member berry. Here's another member berry. And I, there's a few points where I'm like, this is getting a little redundant. But I still enjoyed it. So you would think you would hate it, but I was like, eh, that's forced. But I enjoyed it. I'm like, all right. It just takes you back. I can't explain it. It's neither bad nor good. You're like, all right, I'm along for the ride. And they played the dun 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 dun. They played that so many various ways. I don't know, maybe a rap music version, a techno version a trip-hop version, a classical version, a piano version, somewhere in the movie, everywhere. Dun, 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 dun. And like I said, it feels forced, and you're like, another one? But you're like, all right, I want to hear this version. This sounds a little different. That's interesting. But they, they should have picked the classic version, not the original version, the, mer the version that was made by Family Guy many years later. They should have played that in the movie, and then my ears would have perked up. <laughs> hey, you guys remember that Family Guy version? Go check it out. It's pretty funny. But that being said, it's got a great soundtrack. It gives you all the feels. It is forced at times, but they have a formula. They brought back characters like Sarge and Tagger and Rosewood, and then they introduced his daughter, and one thing that bothered me about the relationship is during the, sh the movie, you find out that him, Axel Foley, and his daughter have not had a relationship for many years. And they're trying to reconcile. But yet, Axel Foley always, throughout all the movies, doesn't seem like that type of a character where he would not continue a friendship or a relationship with somebody, especially his daughter, and stay away from her. Axel Foley seems like one of those people that is always on top of everything. But apparently in this movie, his daughter somehow works and lives in Beverly Hills as an attorney. She has to solve a, a case pro bono for a guy that is wrongfully or possibly wrongfully accused of a murder while they go on the journey. It also stars Kevin Bacon, who is a great meanie in all of the, the episodes, just a classic meanie. And uh, just for the character aspects of this movie, there was a few storylines that I just didn't understand. Um, I believe his name is Taggart. He's now the police chief. And he went against, Ro I think his name is Rosenwood or Rosen Rosengardner, starting for the Bears, Rosengardner. Um, Rosenwood, I think, I think that's his name. But Taggart is now the police chief. And when Rosen Gardner started coming up with some theories on what could actually ha be happening with this possible crime and all of this other stuff that's going on, Taggart, his partner for all those years, doesn't believe him and just believes Kevin Bacon. And eh, Kevin Bacon's character, you know, he's the good guy. And his partner for like 30 years with actual Foley, eh, he always does this. That seemed a little bit off character for Taggart, the same way as Axel Foley wouldn't be in his daughter's life. And he wouldn't throw his daughter on, you know, Taggart and Rosenwood to take care of her. Axel Foley would do everything to reconcile that relationship. 
So it seemed a little out of character for, for those situations. Then there's a new character played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Let's call him Robin from the Dark Knight Return series, I believe it was. And he is a former partner of actual Foley's daughter. And he doesn't, he might be the next coming for the storyline, you know, for the Beverly Hills Cop Police or something like that. But he doesn't overact. And he doesn't come off trying to be comedic like Axel Foley. He just comes off as the straight man. He basically becomes Axel Foley's partner within this escapade while the daughter goes along for a ride as well. And then there were so many shootouts, and they were fun. There were so many police chases and shootouts. It was really, really fun. Um, but nobody ever seems to get shot. It's like the stormtroopers from Star Wars. It's like there's bullets everywhere. They're in the car. There's a bullet in the windshield right here. Right here, and they never get shot. You're like, how, how do they always survive? How does nobody get shot? Do they not know how to shoot? I don't know. <laughs> but again, it's one of those movies you just have a good time and you watch it and you enjoy it. But the storyline had a formula. It went along the, the Beverly Hills Cop formula where things are being revealed little by little. And then for Eddie Murphy's part, he didn't phone it in. Um, there were some really good jokes. He had some good chemistry. But he is an older man now, so he didn't have the energy of the, like, 20-year-old or whatever when he did the first one, part one and two. And then there's a scene where he always does these, like, funny, unique characters so he can get perks, like stay at a hotel or put the banana in the tailpipe, you know, stuff like that. There was an instance where he was going to do that to get a room at the Beverly Hills Hotel or something like that. So he's like, hi, my name is this and that. And then he goes, oh, I'm too tired, man. Can I just get a room? You're like, all right, they moved the movie up to date to where, be honest with you, he can't do all that stuff. Sometimes you just want to get to the point and get a room. Little does he know that room was like $950 in Beverly Hills for one night. I don't know where he came up with the money with, but still. And then there was a scene with Sarge where he comes back, Bronson Pinchot, I love him forever. When I saw him come on screen, I had a Mandela effect. I thought he passed away a couple of years ago. That was a Mandela effect I had, which I'm glad it's not truthful. But did any of you have that Mandela effect where Bronson Pinchot passed away a few years ago? He was from the TV show Perfect Strangers. I don't know. That was a Mandela effect I had. But um, Nassim Pedrod is in this as well, a SNL cast member. She has an excellent TV series called Chad that I really laugh at and like. But she did a cameo. With her and Serge and, and um, Eddie Murphy and Joseph Gordon-Levitt and the daughter where they're trying to buy a house or something, you know, to get clues. It was funny. It was really, really funny. And it brought in that formulaic, you know, like Serge character, but it wasn't Serge or Sarge, <laughs> but it was somebody else who's kind of like that. And it just, it stuck to the formula that we all liked. This might be a one-for-one one clone of Beverly Hills Cop 1 and 2 of the parts that worked. Uh, the only other aspect that I'll just end it with this is they used drugs as the catalyst when they had so many other crimes that could have been manipulated or dealt with in today's world. They stuck with, like, the 1980s classic crime of dealing drugs, which is okay. Seems like a scapegoat. It's easy to do. But drugs like that, in a conspiracy world, the police do deal the drugs like that. So that could be truthful. <laughs> you know, the, the actual police stations and the sheriff stations and the CIA, the FBI, whoever else you want to talk about, Homeland, they're the actual drug dealers. Let's be honest with you. Uh, but they stuck with drugs. And... I didn't think the, the stakes were too much by using that. I thought it would have been would have been kind of cool to see Axel Foley deal with like crypto crime or cyber crime or just something of a crime nature that's newer and up to date. Uh, maybe even a murder or red rum. That would have been interesting. Um, and you don't want this to ever happen, but he had a son in the pilot, the TV show that we talked about a little while ago. Maybe he could have had a son 
that was also red rummed. And then he also had a daughter. And then, you know, they're going after this with a little bit more intensity and hushba. Even though his daughter was attacked and, you know, they had a lot of hushba to, you know, save her and protect her. I just thought the stakes could have been higher, could have been some sort of a different crime. But at the end of the day, I enjoyed it. I believe Beverly Hills Cop made a good, good movie. I believe they are back. I don't know if they're going to do any more in the future, but I had a good time. I really, really did. I was actually surprised by, by how decent it was and enjoyable it was. Um, and it came on Netflix. I don't know why it didn't get a theater release, but again, the theaters are dead nowadays. And it might have been the right move to put it on Netflix because it was July 4th. And a lot of people, you know, are barbecuing and drinking. And then when they get home, they could just put on Netflix and, and, and watch the movie. Back in the days, a lot of people would go to the movie theaters on July 4th. But theaters are dying. Um, but again, I don't know how much more money they would have made in theaters. I don't know. But it could have been in theaters and people would have enjoyed it. It might have made a good amount of money and done pretty decently because it's really enjoyable. But it's also okay that it was on Netflix because we got to enjoy it at home in the air conditioning. And that's why probably a lot more people had a good time because they didn't have to go out into the heat, spend like $80, you know, on food and drinks and tickets where they just stayed at home for like 10, 10 bucks, you know, ordered some food had some air conditioning, and had a good time. Let me know what you thought of Beverly Hills Cop Actual F. Let me know your favorite moments, your favorite quotes. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What do you expect moving forward? I honestly love your guys' opinions. So please let me know your honest thoughts, no matter which way. I really appreciate that, because you guys are my life sometimes, and you're my friends, and I call you guys my family. So I like to know what my family thinks of the movie. That's it for now. If there's any other movies that you think you want me to watch or you're starting to like my reviews, um, let me know. Let me know in the comments below which one of those movies are, and you never know. I might do it, and I might give you credit. I mean, I might do a review and give you credit. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I love you all, and I'll see you on the next review.